Hey, let's go live. Hey, we're live. Hello. Evening, everybody. Hi, everybody. How y'all doing tonight? How's everybody doing? Y'all hear us okay in the room? Give me a thumbs up. Everything going okay? The player looking all right? You guys aren't buffering? How are we doing tonight? Everything going well? Hi, Micah. Hi, the Castle. And Sherry, you made it. And, you know, of course, Country Man's here. Dog Man made it in. That's nicer. Micah, there. The North Cal. Show 13. Yeah, all right. Show Sleep No More is with us. I thought that was a lampshade over there. Dang, damn it. We got to get you a different hat, son. You keep, you know, you keep scaring me when you keep moving over there. Well, Country, how you been, buddy? I'm doing okay. Good, good. So, yeah. We've dropped the bit rate quite a bit on this player, and hopefully it won't. Uh, somebody let me know. Somebody, let me move over here closer to the microphone. Hi. Somebody let me know if this thing starts spinning on them or they start having problems. We dropped the bit rate quite a bit. So, hopefully, everything will keep going just fine for everybody in the room tonight. So, let's hope for that. Keep our fingers, toes, and our eyes crossed. Don't get up and walk around like that. You'll definitely fall down. All right. Cheryl Ann took her mom to the hospital today. I guess her tumors are growing faster than normal. Oh. She does have cancer. Everybody say a prayer. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, and uh, I don't at? know. Dr. She's Edna? in She's yeah. in Southern Ohio. I had to go to Lexington for the for what, the uh, what, what surgery. Part of Southern Ohio? I'm over here in Fairfield, just north of Cincinnati. No, nah, she's over by... Uh, uh, Marietta in that area. Oh, okay. All righty. Yep, yep. Well, yeah, you know, I'm a Kentucky boy, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. All righty. Now, so, uh, Micah says, I hear Rich. Will you hear country when country talks? Micah, can you hear me? I hope you can hear him. I'm here. He's here. I hear him. I don't know the rest of you hear him. The rest of you hear him? Hopefully everybody hears him. Anybody hear Country Man talking when he talks? Testing one, two, three, four. Can you hear me in the room, anybody? Well, if I can't hear you, we got a big problem because I don't know what to do to fix that. Uh, well, Microsoft. Mike, okay. 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 We just got a delay in the room about five or six seconds is no, reason. Well, I knew the delay. I just didn't know if they were actually hearing you. In case I start cussing Rich out, that way everybody can uh, cut me off. Yeah, you can cuss me out all I want. I don't care. I don't listen to it. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Keep cussing. Keep cussing. Uh, let me tell you about my first video. It took me a good five hours, four hours to do that video, another two and a half hours to load it up. You mean it's I a four hour video? No, it took oh, four okay. hours of uh, editing, uh, production editing, and and all that good stuff. Well, you need to get a better crew over there. That's what took you that long. I need to get a crew, period. There you go. But i done pretty good, I think. You said you watched it, Rich, and it came out pretty good. Yeah, so. I watched it. I watched it. I made but, a comment. I, I watched it. I appreciate it. Yep. Let's see if everybody else liked it. Uh and we'll get back, and everybody, there's a couple of people in here. Should Surely, goodness, somebody's going to make a comment on it, and I can, uh, or question, and I'll All get right. back on it. Well, let me play the video. I'll mute myself, and uh, you can mute you, and we'll play the video and see what happens here. All right. This is what, the fish trap? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it to it here. Hey, y'all, country man here. I want to do a video. And uh, as I go along, I'll thank who done it for me. Boy, that camera's crooked. That's better. Uh, I'm going to thank a couple of people and uh, along the way. Uh, some from my present, one from my past. And I'm going to make something that uh, we would use in a SHTF situation or a significant life altering life-altering event which I think it's kind of cooler to say and doesn't use the shit word so we're gonna go with the S significant life-altering event if it hits the fan what we're gonna do is uh, go back to basics go back to living off the land go back to uh, hunting fishing trapping uh, 
yeah, tuna comes from the store, it's in a can. It also comes from the ocean, and you go fish for it. And a catfish fillet did not get filleted itself, and you have to learn how to do it. Before you have the catfish to fillet, you have to learn how to catch it. If you have other means around your house, uh, you don't need a fishing pole. And that's what I want to show you. To my knowledge, what I am going to show you is illegal in all 50 states. I am not responsible for what you do on your own. If you use what I am going to show you, you take responsibility for all of the laws in your states. And if you get caught using it or whatever, hey, I'm telling you how to survive. This is a survival situation. I'm not telling you to go out and break any laws. So don't do it because I told you to. I am going to tell you how to make a, a, something out of metal. And what you do with it after that, it's up to you. So saying that, you're going to get me on full screen for a while. You get to see how fat I really am. And uh, we started out with a piece of string. With that piece of string, it goes around my dehydrator all the way my, all the way around just perfectly. It is the circumference of my dehydrator down to the bun. So this will be approximately how what is that? 13 and a half inches, I do believe. Uh that's plenty big enough for making what we're going to make. Uh, the ones that I made in the past were about 18 inches. So you find you something, the circumference is 18 inches. Make you a string. Let's go over here and uh, we're going to set it up to where I can see. That's my shelf. It's got a lot of junk on it. That's sauerkraut and beans on top shelf. Uh, jars and a coping saw or a miter box saw there. And then a bird feeder. And the chair that's fit for a king. Do I have all my preps? Nope, I don't. I had to go borrow a pair of wire snips off my neighbor. A little later on, I'm going to tell you who sent me this chicken wire. Good man. Everybody knows him. What I'm going to do is take this string here. No measuring, no need for a tape measure, whatever. And I am going to go around this, keep going, all the way to right there. And I'm going to add one to it, so right there is where we need to be. I'm going to make a cut right there. too high or not but what we done what I done you're watching so I'm gonna unroll this a little bit where did I do that at I just lost my deal as you can see it takes a few feet of wire it ain't feet. It's probably, I don't know. But we're going to wind up with a circle. And what I'm going to do is cut that right down through there. And when I get done cutting all this, I'll get back to you. And what you want to do when you get down here, if you can see these wires, it's an octagon. You want to cut to one side of that octagon. 
that way you're left with all these little wires sticking out. They will come into use a little bit later. But you want those wires. So let me get back to you once I get this cut and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, y'all. I got all my wires folded around and uh, I got it a pretty nice seam down through there. A few, few wires sticking out, but I have got a complete cylinder. Is it completely round? No, but it'll be all right. Uh, what I want to do now, I don't know if you can see your chicken wire, but about every six, 12, 14 inches, you got a kind of a straight wire. And it, there's a straight wire where I got each of my index fingers here. It kind of uh, separates the chicken wire into threes. What I'm going to do now is count the uh, wire, the octagons in between. So there's a half, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and a half, which, which would be fourteen. So I'm going to come down here seven. There's one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, right along here. That's too long. We're going to go back up here and where that first third is, the first third half of the wire, this is one inch mesh, so we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 inches. I am going to get me some more wire. I'm going to cut me out another piece as long as my string was, the circumference not the radius, I messed up on that earlier. No yelling at me. I know what I'm talking about, I just misspoke. Uh, and I'm gonna cut me out another piece this long and this wide. So what it amounts to is once I get this cut, I'll have three funnels for my trap. Let me get this cut out and we'll go on to the next step. And uh, going to be a lot of fish traps right here. I'm going to say about 10. But let me get this cut out. I want to do one section here. One section of wire down to the first uh, deal here. And then the circumference of it. And uh, I'll show you what to do next. Countryman out for now. Hey y'all, uh, I got a thunderstorm going on outside big time. That's the reason that last section of the video uh, turned off. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera back around to where I was working on it and kind of show you what I was doing. The funnel doesn't have to be perfect. There is a uh, method to the madness on that. Uh, but you make a funnel to where it's center of your cylinder and you uh, cut it out and fold it over to where it uh, will make a funnel inside there and you want it kind of center if it's off to one edge don't worry about it but uh, I've halfway kind of tied that together on the other end what we're going to do is the next and final step to it and uh, let's turn the camera around and get back to work and uh, I have it completely wired in the funnel but it's in place to the point that it ain't going to go nowhere and uh, I'll show you what the other end is going to be like When you get your wire, your roll of chicken wire, it's going to be uh, kind of wired together with a piece of wire. And what I done was unthreaded it, and that way I could unroll my wire. And you wouldn't believe it's like piano wire, how much I got out of this. 
I got a feeling that you can't see my head. I'm going to raise that up a little bit. That looks better. You won't believe how much wire I got out of that. I bet there's 15 foot of wire that they use just to hold that into a nice tight cylinder. And I am going to cut me off some pieces about two inches long. And what I want to do with them, I want to make me, oh, I don't know. Let's start out with 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight, nine, ten, and I'm going to make those. I'm going to use those. They're just like I got to thinking. If you had a box of paper clips, two inch long, undo your paper clip. Those would work just fine. A little heavier wire than what I got here. And there's another deal I want to do. And I'm going to make it about six inches. This is not rocket science, people. So I don't have heavy wire. So I'm going to fold me up about six inches long, maybe eight. And then I'm going to fold it back over again. If you got a welding rod, that's what my brother used or any stiff wire that should be enough to give you an idea of what I'm going to do and what I've got I'm going to twist those together and I am going to come up with a piece of heavier gauge wire better known as, uh, what do you call it, twisted wire. And this has got a purpose too. It's only about 8 inches long. Plus I got all my little pieces. Now you can see that I've got the funnel in there. It needs to be wired in a little better. But the funnel goes right down the center. I hope you guys can see that. She goes right down the center there. I'm going to wire that in better. That's okay. But this end down here, it gets collapsed. Nice and flat. And we want to take it and flatten it out, all except for about six or eight inches on this one end. Take your short pieces of wire. Stick it through there. Just You don't have to tie it. Just wrap it around two or three times, and it's going to hold these together. The only time that you may get something that will mess up your trap is you get a pretty good sized terrapin turtle in there, or uh, maybe a big old catfish. You'd be surprised what damage a flathead catfish can do. Do as I say, not as I do. I'm going to put these in my mouth. Don't do it. I'm going to wire up these edges. And pretty much just close off all but about six inches of the trap. And all I'm doing is wrapping those wires around. I'm really, if you've got a pair of needle nose, you could, uh, you know, do it a little nicer and neater. Or even try to tie this wire in a knot. But what I'm doing is just wrapping it around and closing it off. I'm going to say 
if I got this down to a science, I could make one in 20 minutes or less. But, since it's been, since the 1970s, since I've done one of these, and uh, I'm old and had to remember and call my brother and all this stuff, you can see my funnel is still loose in there, but what I want to do is make sure it's centered and get it wired down. Anybody can do that. I just wanted to let you see how it's going to turn out. But down here on this end, where I've got this uh, opening right here, is where Mr. Mustard Fish, if he's coming in here and he slides up there and he goes in the center of that and he's in his cage just shaking around. Well, if you got that wire, which I would, I would probably use baling wire or a, uh, a uh, welding rod, I'm going to wiggle this back through here a couple of times, back and forth, and just in and out of the holes. to where this is the reason you need a good stiff piece of metal this is not working that good you just want that wired shut so you got Mr. Mustard Fish in your jar or in your cage you come up here all you do Take your trap out of the water. You reach in here, you pull out your wire, you open that up a little bit, get your bucket and everything in the right spot, and Mr. Mustard Fish will slide right out of it. These nets, I don't know how much uh, the wire costs, so I can't do a cost analysis on it for you. But in a SHTF situation, you can use a uh, screen out of the screen door. Uh, got an old cotton trailer around, get a cotton torch up, make you one out of that. Chicken wire, extra chicken wire laying, laying around your homestead, easy done. And I'm living in an apartment. I can do these. I am going to finish wiring this up here and make it all nice and pretty. And uh, I'll tell you what. If I had some of these laying around in a significant life-altering situation, and I bet I could sell these like hotcakes. It ain't really... Uh, the deal about you using these, but if you needed to, you've got the knowledge to use them. And uh, how about a barter tool? A net like this in a significant life altering situation could feed a family. And it's not really hard to make. And Ironhead 41. God bless you, brother, for the wire. I hope this video uh, sparks interest for you. I hope it does you proud. I've already promised my brother I wouldn't mention his name because he's afraid he's going to get in trouble with the game warden for it. I'm old. I don't care. Uh, but I was talking to him. If you're going to catch scaly fish like crappie, brim, bluegill, uh, Red, red, uh, red wing, red gill, uh, sun perch and stuff like that. All you gotta do is find you a bush that is hanging out over the water, and stick this under the water, all six or eight inches. And uh, if you got a current in the water, you stick it with the funnel going downstream, cause fish always feed upstream. And if you 
we had the bar pits back in Missouri, and there was little to no current in them, and it didn't matter, so we just stuck them on the trees. And the traps we made were a little bigger around with this. Instead of four foot long, they were five foot long. But uh, I have picked up the traps out of the out of the water, and they were sitting there shaking, completely full of crappie. I'm talking slab crappie and bluegill. And trust me, this is a whole lot faster than a cane pole and a bucket of minnows. Now, granted, a cane pole and a bucket of minnows in a case of beer is a whole lot more fun, but these were too. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys this. God bless. Let me know how you feel. And uh, hope it works out. Don't worry about measurements. Get you some wire. Make you a tube. Cut you a funnel. Eyeball it. Put it inside. Flatten out the other end. Put you a, a stick or a sticker. You could use a willow tree to close off this main section here. Anything to where you can get out the fish quickly. And uh, try it. Uh, I would love to have anybody that can make, I've seen a bu bunch of minnow traps. This is not a minnow trap. This is for fish. And uh, anybody want to do a VR to it? God bless you. Countryman out for now. Alrighty, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, those will take any fish that'll go into it, <clears throat> and I know a few guys down in Louisiana who use chicken wire and catch crawfish, and then some big crawfish get stuck in chicken wire, but yeah, they use chicken wire to catch crawfish down there too, so yeah, you can use all kinds of, all kinds of fish you can take with that, so throwing the bait in there, putting bait in there is a good idea, you can wire the bait up to it also, what do you think, country? You you really don't need bait for catching the crappie or the uh, bluegill or anything like that. Just set it under a tree. All the fish kind of congregate about three or four foot from around the bank. If you go to a pond, you can see them uh, kind of circulate. Yeah. And uh, let me mute this. Uh, yeah, you gotta mute. You gotta mute the room. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm muted. We always baited but, ours, but then uh, we we baited ours and used it. Yeah, similar to a crab to a crab pot there. And uh, here in Ohio, it's not illegal because you use them like turtle traps and uh, other stuff. Now, if you're going to use it for turtle traps here in Ohio, you have to leave a couple of inches above the water so that the turtles can breathe while they're in there. Oh, these traps are not illegal in Ohio. Nope, as long as you leave a couple inches above water, so you can make it for a turtle trap. And that way, if the turtles get caught in there, they can breathe. But if you got it completely underwater, it is illegal because it will kill the turtles. So as long as you okay. leave, leave a couple inches above water, and they actually sell a net version of it at Bass Pro Shops and other places around town. And they're listed as turtle traps. They're hoop hoop turtle traps is what they list them as. Yeah, they're made out of uh, nylon, ain't they? Yeah, I believe so. But you can you can make them yourself. There's just a size limit on how big the holes have to be. I believe chicken wire is legal. And uh, we've we've used chicken wire and made smaller ones, but instead of making hoops, we make ours uh, square. It's a different kind of configuration. It's called a bream trap. And uh, yeah, we pick we take small bluegills and bream and stuff like that, use them for bait for our catfish. But, uh, but I, I've caught thirty and forty slab crappie and those at a, at a time, and and we go back there check you know fifteen nets at a time my brother and I and go back and have one big crappie fish fry. Man, that was good eating back in the day. Right. This was mid seventies. Yep. And I'm just saying in a significant life altering event, you know, I don't think the game warden is really going to bug you. And if you offer him some fried crappie, he's going to not say no, cause he's going to be hungry too. So, that's the way I look at it. Well, I usually like to get them out in a boat and hand them a dynamite and ask them whether they're going to fish or they're going to, you know, start writing tickets. Yeah, so I've done that before, too. Yeah, so, yeah, usually usually they fish, but, yeah. Amazing what you can do with a few household chemicals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or old 
old military phones that you crank. <clears throat> you don't even need a military phone. I <laughs> walnut hulls. We we've we've harvested fish with walnut hulls. And uh, my mom had a five pound box of uh, rotenone, which is does the same thing that walnut hulls does, only it's a white powder, and it'll take the oxygen out of the water in a heartbeat, and every fish in a 20-foot radius will come right straight to the top, and all you got to do is dip them out. And uh, I don't know what my mom was doing with it. She's 70 years old, and it was in the in the pump house where we had all of our canned goods, and it was on the top shelf. She said, it's there if we need it, and I don't even know what she used it for. But it was made to take the fish out of the oxygen out of water to kill fish. And what big dirt in the room? He's talking about using his hands there grabbing turtles. What he don't tell you is he doesn't usually use his hand. He uses his hand to hold the hot dog, and he grabs the turtle with his teeth. Uh, big dirt's a big boy. He can get away with stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, he is. I have caught more turtles. I forget. You you were telling me, Rich, you used bacon to catch uh, catfish with, didn't it? Yep, you bacon, you raw bacon to catch catfish. I have caught more turtles on a single hook and a big old chunk of bacon than you shake a stick at, especially soft shell turtles. They love bacon, yep. and you just bring them up. And I, I I was sitting on a bridge that had the wood and cracks in bet- in the wood between the wood, and I'd turn them on their edges, stick them in the cracks. And uh, get a bucket full of them, go home and eat them. Soft shell turtles is some of the best eating you ever had in your life. No, I'm not really hip on soft shell turtle. I, I prefer a snapper myself. Alligator turtle is my favorite, but I don't really care for soft shells that much. They're good. They make some dang good soup with them. I know that much. Yep. And they're fast, too. People don't realize how fast a turtle is. Soft shell. Oh, yeah. Soft shell turtle will, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll move like, like turtles ain't supposed to. Yeah. So yeah, that's a fast, that's a fast turtle there. All right, you got another video. Everybody, this next video, it's a cooking video. I hope everybody enjoys it. Uh, I know I did after I got done cooking it. So go ahead and play it, Rich. All See right. what they think about it. Let me mute here. <laughs> hey, y'all, countryman hey, here. I'm going to make me some homemade pizzas today. I got me some of the uh, Honeyville hot uh, mozzarella flakes, and I put them in some water and made me some mozzarella cheese. It's a little soupy, but that's okay. It just looks soupy. It's not. Got me some of the dehydrated onions. Got that already. Got me some flour in a bowl here. A little bit of... Uh, yeast there, pizza yeast. I got some seasonings and uh, I took some of my ribs and I uh, boiled them and made me some uh, pork meat and I am going to make me a barbecue pizza. So let me get this uh, dough made up and stretched out in the pan and I'll get right back to you. God bless. All right, y'all, I'm back. I got my uh, pizza dough all made up, spread out in my pan. My ongoing re- relationship here with a little bit of Mrs. Dash on there. This is a garlic herb. Just enough to season my dough and uh, give it a little flavor. This is not really a uh, pizza to... You know, it's not going to taste like a pizza. This is going to be my barbecue pizza. And I am going to have, I uh, dehydrated some cilantro last week. And I just want to put a little bit on there and spread that around. I love my cilantro, a.k.a. in English, coleander. Go put that on there. And over here in my pan, I shredded up my beef. I'm going to put this on. This is not beef, it's pork. I'm sorry. Should have shredded it up a little thinner, I think. But that's okay. We got some chunks going on here. Uh, 
all over there. Going to get all kinds of shredded chunks on there. Spread this out a little bit more. That looks pretty good if you ask me. Little pieces here that need to be done up. Now my uh, onions over here, they're dehydrated. They done pretty good. I'm going to throw some of them on there. Oh yeah, this is going to be good. Now next step is I'm going to add my barbecue sauce, and I can't do that with one hand and hold this camera. So I'll be right back with you when I get done with the barbecue sauce. Alright y'all, I got my barbecue sauce on there. It is not homemade. And when I learned how to make it as good as... Uh, what's that baby's name? Oh, Mr. Ray. Uh, I will continue using his. Matter of fact, I'm hooked on it. I'm spreading this all out here, getting it all covered up best I can. And, uh, hey, this is looking pretty daggum good if you ask me. And the best thing we're going to do is our dehydrated cheese. It's not, it's kind of ooey gooey, but, uh, it's got a consistency of old shredded cottage cheese, I would say. And we're going to put this on there. I do think it's going to melt pretty good. It won't be like the uh, powdered milk cheese that, you, that I make at home when I make it out of the powdered milk. Which is easier than everybody lets on because there's a couple of steps you don't have to do that everybody does. Uh, I am going to put this cheese on here nice and thick. This is probably all oh, two cups of uh, the mozzarella cheese dehydrated. Now that looks pretty good if you ask me. I'm going to stick this in the oven. It says 425 for about 10 minutes. And uh, let's see, I made the dough myself. I had the ribs in the freezer. I boiled them and uh, shredded them up and got the meat off of them. I rehydrated the onions and the cheese, and I put it all together myself. I uh, dehydrated the spices. The only thing store-bought I had was a little dab of oil under on the pan when I put my uh, dough on, and a little bit of Ray Baby sauce, and a little bit of Mrs. Dash for seasoning. So, I'll get back to you when I get this out of the oven. Wish me luck. We'll be back in about 20 minutes. Want to know where I get my inspiration? Andrew Zimmer's on TV. Hey, y'all. My pizza's done. Uh, of course, I'm left-handed and got to put the knife over here on the other side. But let's cut a piece of this to see what she turns out. It bubbled. Clean over the side of the pan there in the back. And, man, does it smell good. That cheese, the dehydrated cheese, melted. Just like you would if you sliced it up yourself or grated it yourself. I've got to make sure this is cut all the way through. Let me cut this, put it on a plate, and I'll be right back with you. That is some good stuff, y'all. I'm a happy camper. The problem is, this won't last long here. I don't know why, but it'll wind up missing.
That's some good stuff, y'all. Whiskey right here. Wish you were here, he says. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Eating that up and then not sharing any with the rest of it. He didn't bring enough for everybody in the room now, did you? Didn't bring enough for everybody in the room now. No, no, no. And he's listening to it on the, on the player. That's why he's not talking to me. Unmute. Oh, well, I'm still listening to the show. <laughs> it's... Best part's coming up. I tell you what, I'll never go to Papa John's again after making that pizza, Rich. Oh, yeah? Well, we'll see. Uh, uh, it looked all right. I'll, uh, I'll just save myself about 40 bucks a month, put it that way. There you go. Can't beat that with a big stick. You can have chicken pizza and vegetable pizza. Well, wait a minute. You don't do vegetable. Yeah, you can do. You can have pork and you know hamburger and sausage and all kinds of different stuff there. <laughs> it turned out real good. I'm proud of myself if I if I do say so. Now the uh, how come Cheryl Ann keeps dropping out? Is that she got a problem on her end or is it buffering or are we having any know. problems with the player? I don't know. Everything's still going okay over there, Castle? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Let me know. Yeah. You got nobody, nobody's buffered? Nobody's had any problems tonight? I hope, I hope. I hope we got this thing fixed out. So, yeah, Castle, now I know Castle, uh, it's buffering during videos. Really? Really? Oh, huh? well. Mine hasn't been buffering or anything. I'm, I, uh, I've had a lot of commercials tonight. Well, I've got the ad blocker at the top of the page. You go up to the top of the page and click on that blue print, you can get an ad blocker, and <coughs> it'll work with everything you got, and you won't have to watch any of them commercials. Oh. So, Dirt says it's all good for him. Now, see, I think it's where... It was, I think it's different places and different things that are going on, so... You know, some people don't have buffering, some people don't. I don't know what it is. I can't make everybody happy here with this thing. Uh, I'm kind of afraid to drop it down much more than what it is, but... Uh, I'm going to wait till after the show to install that, but thank you, Rich, for telling me. I didn't... Yeah. I, I knew that there was ad blocker, but I didn't know where it was at. Well, you just got to go up there and read. Well, you, now like, you're asking like, for hard stuff. Five minutes to read that much, but uh, yeah, that's what, you know, I get it in there every once in a while. Sometimes I got to ask Castleman what the big words are. But, yeah. And I want to tell Castle Mom and everybody else in the room that she is right. Big Dirt is a bad influence. He called me at ten thirty here the night, and we talked till three thirty in the morning. Because he slept, he slept all night or slept all day. He's a good guy. I I really enjoy talking to him. We're I'm not gonna say two peas in the pod, but we've done a lot of the same stuff that we didn't get caught for, and uh, it's nice telling war stories. You can't admit that to dirt. He used to be a police officer. You get in trouble. I used to be a security officer, do carrying the same stuff he done. Well, so that's not we, no, no. He's got more. It was a police officer. He's got more stuff there. You know, he's allowed to do other things. Uh, I beg to differ. Okay. I worked security at Hispanic, non-documented alien bars in California, so we got a lot of, away with a lot of stuff. There you go. All right, so I, I, you've got that. Correct. You got that, and you got uh, your uh. What do I want to say? Your pizza there. You got your chicken wire. And uh, Iron, Ironhead sent you a chicken wire, huh? He is a good man. He's, he's, I, we were talking about it. And uh, I, the video that uh, one of the, I was uh, in the rest home. And I, I don't know if you watched it or not. You can go back and look at my log net video. i done a drawing of it. And uh, it's just me. A ink pen or a pencil and a piece of paper and I'm describing how to make that log net and doing dimensions and everything and going into 
detail of about, oh, probably 10, 15 minutes there, wherever long the video is. And that is my number one video on YouTube. Huh? Uh, and it doesn't show anything but me talking. Or I, my face is not even in. It's just the pencil and the paper. Well, that gives you an idea. Now you need to keep your face out of your videos. Maybe that's what you need to do. No. I agree oh, yeah, with you. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Hey, I get that comment every once in a while. It'd be a lot better if I didn't show my face in the video, see? But, uh... We need to be like Whale and Jennings and just show our hands and not our faces. I thought if I'd done this video, we'll see how it does on YouTube. I ain't doing it for the for the views, but... You still there? But, uh, you know, it's it's off the grid. I'm still here. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, it was, uh, you know... And it's a good thing to have. I mean, you could make one of those if you wanted to make one, you know, for other for other fish or bigger fish. If you live near the ocean, you just use bigger wire. Yeah. I mean, you could you could use that uh, old fence wire or rebar. You know, the the wire to put down and put concrete in with the old concrete wire. If you could really big fish out of the ocean, you could get them in that. And just make a really big fish trap. I mean, you know. You you could even take. I've I've. Uh contemplated i haven't done it yet of making a square box kind of like what you was talking about earlier for the uh uh the other uh crowded trap you had yeah. and make it about oh eight inches tall two foot wide three foot long and make, just to make a big old flat box out of wire and on one end you angle you some uh wires where they're sticking farther in at the bottom and at, and then they're attached to the top of it and as you know a bird trap is when the quails walk in they walk by those wires and when they go to come out the wires won't let them back out it's made up like a have a heart trap with that slanted door right and uh if you got a covey of quail and they're all feeding with their head down and you got feed going into that trap i bet you could catch a bunch of them possibility I, I, you could do the same thing with pigeons probably yeah the other dark meat i've ate pigeons it's not a problem i know people say there ain't nothing but rats but uh pigeons don't eat nothing that you wouldn't eat they're not scavenger birds well they uh catfish is a scavenger fish they feed off the bottom but everybody eats catfish and crab, crab, catfish, lobster, they're all bottom feeders. Yep. You know, uh, it, it's kind of funny you said scavengers there. Now, I've been reading a book lately about human beings being scavengers. And we are. We are scavengers. I mean, we will eat stuff and have eaten stuff in our past that we didn't kill. You know, we, we've scavenged for food. We've scavenged for stuff. Uh, and we use what we can find, and typically we are a scavenger. Now, we don't normally go around eating, you know, dead things that we find and eat it that way, but there are people, I mean, you know, hey, we've had roadkill and other stuff like that. You are a scavenger. I was going to say, fresh roadkill is on the menu if I see it. Matter of fact, I was uh, southbound on 77 down here just below New Philadelphia. There was a deer that some four-wheeler hit in the middle of the road. I was on my way or make a delivery, and uh, the highway patrol pulled off the road and pulled out, you know, was turning around to go back and finish killing this deer. It was kicking in the middle of the road. I said, Smokey Bear, I want to see me. I said, what are you going to do with that deer? He says, I'm going to shoot it. I said, well, can I have it? And he said, yeah, come on back. So I went down next next exit, my flatbed big truck, 48-foot spread axle. Pulled over the side of the road. He shot that deer. He helped me load it up on that flatbed. I strapped it down. He wrote me a piece of paper, and I took that home and skinned it and ate it. And that's all I had to do. I had a paper from the Highway Patrol, Ohio State Patrol. And we some of the best meat I ever had. About the 1st of October. Wasn't even both season yet up here. <laughs> Yeah, it's a roadkill. I've been there myself. I turned a corner down in Kentucky and wiped out a turkey. He went in the back of the station wagon, and uh, he's standing in the middle of the road. And uh, I got, I was riding down uh, 75, and we got off at an exit, and the guy hit a deer. Deer ran out by the exit, and the guy hit the deer with a uh, with a semi, and he kept on going. And that deer spun around, and laid in the road. I got out and picked it up, and threw it in the trunk of the car. So. 
it wasn't roadkill, but I tell you what made my butt pucker one night. We were in the soybean field coming out with a grain truck full of grain. We had about 300 bushel in this old bob truck and my brother was driving i was in the jump seat we had the lights on and all of a sudden this big thing started coming toward the windshield on my side and it came through the windshield and landed in my lap and it was a great big old barn owl about 14 inches tall that went through the windshield and landed in my lap and if you don't think that'll wake you up in a heartbeat it sure did Thank God that bird was dead because it had a beak on it as long as my pinky. Oh, yeah. And uh, killed it dead in a doornail and, 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 and fell in my lap. And I was probably 11, 12 years old, and I'll never forget that. Yep. Now, the, uh, so the traps were nice. The pizza was good. You can use all kinds of different ingredients on that pizza. The cheese, cheese worked out real good, it looked like, on that. Yeah, the cheese, I uh, I made some uh, homemade macaroni and cheese with that uh, uh, freeze-dried cheese. And what and it came out kind of lumpy, and it didn't, uh, the cheese didn't melt all the way. Uh -huh. But next time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that cheese through my bullet blender and make it into a powder form. And then I'm going to, uh, it would be like the powder that you get in a... Craft macaroni and cheese, uh -huh. and then I'm going to pour that into my uh, cooked macaroni, and I bet it comes out delicious. It'll be a white cheese macaroni, but the only difference is it hadn't got yellow number five in it. Yeah, they sell they sell white cheese macaroni and cheese and stuff like that. So I'm um, right now. I've got a new video up. I'm myself personally. I'm dehydrating eggs. I seen the first part of that. I'm looking yeah. forward to the second, man. Uh, well, as soon as that quits, as soon as the dehydrating is done, we'll take it out of the dehydrator and chop it up and powder it for them, and that'll be from there, and we'll give it a try after that. But uh, the only concern I had about you know uh, dehydrating that in a raw form uh, versus cooked, if it was in a raw form and you're going to cook that at what 140 degrees, uh -huh. I, I would be worried about salmonella incubation there for the first couple of hours. Uh, well, the uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't have to worry about that. Well, my thoughts were if I cooked it anyway, aren't I driving out some of the moisture and making it go faster? I mean, that's a lot of oh, water. Yeah. That's a lot of water to dehydrate eggs, mostly water anyway. So yeah. I figured when I cooked it, you know, I set it up and then I cut it up into very small pieces and spread it out on the trays. And yeah, I guess you could go either way. It just uh, depends on how fast your dehydrator gets up to uh, temperature and goes that way. But. Yeah, that is a thought. Oh, excuse me. Ugh, excuse me. That is a thought. I've been up since about. I, for some reason now lately, I've been getting up at like five or six in the morning. I can't break the cycle, and then I'm not a nap person. Unless I'm not feeling good, I'm not a nap person. So I've been up since about five a.m. Well, I done what I told you to. I ain't had coffee in two days, and I was ready to go to bed at six o'clock tonight. And so I drink coffee, and I'm sitting here finishing off that court I was telling you about. And dirt, call me tonight because I'm gonna be up till two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. People eat anything, she says, when they're hungry. That that is true. Uh, if if people go, oh, I won't eat that, then they ain't hungry enough. I've ate everything but possum. If it walks, crawls, or slivers in the in the ground or in the woods, I've ate it uh, except possum. I heard they were greasy, but I'm not past. Uh, Eating that. I've had possum. Possum's not bad. You gotta parboil, parboil the old ones first. The parboil them and get all the uh, fat and grease off of them. I heard. Yeah, and put put them up on them. I have a. I don't know what. I guess it's for hams or for. I don't know what exactly it's for, but I have a a baking. I have a baking pan and I have a rack, and the rack is V shaped, and I guess you put like your lamb up in there and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. When we got it, we, we, I mean, I put groundhog up on it and everything else, duck. I let the grease drip out. Like when I do a duck, because ducks are real greasy, they drip out. And groundhogs are real greasy, they drip out. Oh, groundhogs, some of the best meat I ever had in my life. But that, uh, you know, we, we eat all that stuff. Um, somebody's going to get out of here. I know they will when we're talking this way. But 
Yeah, yeah, just old hillbillies, and that's just the way it goes. You eat that stuff and come up with that. My kids have eaten. Now, my kids don't like duck. They don't like duck because it's greasy, but if I take it and I bake it that way and the duck drips out, then we take it off the bird, take it off the bone, and I mix it up with barbecue. They like it that way. They like barbecued duck. I, uh... I've never had groundhog, but I was down in Missouri, so, I mean, they, they didn't uh, really go around in in our area. So, I've had beaver, four-legged kind of chew down trees. They, uh, they, I think they're about the same. That one we killed was 85 pounds. We uh, skinned all the fat off of it, parboiled it like a goat, and then turned around and barbecued it. It was a little stringy, but they were good. Did you eat the tail? No, I didn't. Uh, tail's supposed to be the best part. I haven't had, I've had, I haven't had beaver tail. I've had beaver, but not the tail. I didn't get the tail. Now, uh, Cheryl Ann says uh, she had to be starving for snake. Actually, rattlesnake is pretty darn good, and it's very expensive. Uh, that's not bad. I've had caribou and elk and, and, and bison and... All, all that stuff. I mean, you go out west and you can get that jerky just about anywhere. And I was down in Oklahoma and they had this little store on the side of the road that said buffalo steaks. Well, I went in there and I paid like $15 for one T-bone. It's probably inch and a half thick of buffalo meat. And I cooked it on my Burton butane stove in the truck. I uh, uh, seared it and then turned it down low put a lot of water in it, and put me some carrots and potatoes around it, and I slow-cooked that thing on that little butane stove for about four hours. And that was some of the best meat I ever had. It is darker. It is leaner than regular beef and uh, has a little, uh, I'm not going to say gamier taste, but a different taste than beef. But it was good. Yeah, we've got, um, we can get bison and buffalo and all that stuff over here place across the street from me sells all that exotic stuff and alligator and everything else and uh, bugs and grubs and everything else we can get over there uh, are you in I know what store you're talking about is are you in rock through one distance of that place yep okay I I walk, there on walk, the... walk across the street and walk over there and yeah buddy I'm I'm there in like 15 20 minutes walk walk down there and go shopping and walk back home 275 exit Five, six, something like that. You ain't too far from seventy-five. No, yeah, I know it. Yeah, two seventy-five, seventy-five. Right, it's, uh, I'm right off Route Four where it's at. I'm right across, so kind of catty corner from it. Yep. I, I I've been by that place. Never been there, but I I know I know they I know you stomping grounds down there now. I'll come and hunt you down. Yep, yep. Yeah, we ever have a life-altering situation in this area we're set up pretty good because there's a lot of freezer plants around here and other places like that so in my uh in my repertoire of um shall we say harvesting tools for after the you know what hits the fan uh -huh. crowbar crowbars and, and bolt cutters so yeah gonna be very handy in my area you'd be surprised what you can uh, never mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I refuse to answer on the grounds that may incriminate me. There you go. There you go. But I went through a six-week security academy in California. We studied the California Criminal Law Manual, the same thing they use in post. And we were supposed to secure buildings and keep people from breaking in. And one of the reasons, one of the ways they taught us how to keep people from breaking in was learn how to break in yourself. You had to know what the bad guys were going to do, more or less. And uh, it worked out real good. Frog legs. We're talking about frog legs in the room. They got frog legs on the uh, down here by me. We've got some Oriental uh, all-you-can-eat places, and they serve frog legs down here on the uh, on the menu. I went to a Chinese buffet up here. They had frog legs. Yeah. I went up there and took everyone off the buffet. They had ate them. Told the little China girl to go get me more. They filled it up. I went through four plates of frog legs. Had two big plates of bones sitting there. And I knew the owner. He come out and pat me on the back. He said, you see all these people? And I said, yeah. He said, I make money off of them. He said, you? I go broke. He said, I pay $9 a pound for them frog legs. Yep. I said, I'm sorry. He said, no, no, no. He said, it's okay. You come back anytime. I'm glad you ha you like him. 
but don't bring friends. <laughs> there you go. And uh, I, I, he lost money on me that night, but man, they were good. Man, they do. They, they, you know, they, they want you to eat the other stuff. They hope, they hope people come in there and won't eat the expensive things. So, yeah. uh, a friend of mine went here the other day to the store or to the Chinese place, and he thought he got him a big uh, spoonful of guacamole. And he took the spoon, and, or a regular-sized spoon, and bit into it, and it wasn't guacamole. It was wasabi sauce. There you go. And he had the whole thing in his mouth. It liked to kill him. He said he couldn't breathe for five minutes. They almost called the ambulance on him. But he decided it wasn't guacamole real quick. It wasn't guacamole. That's good. That's real good. All right, country. It's 9 o'clock. Let's call it a show. Run it to the end here, buddy. Anything else you want to talk about or say? For uh, I just appreciate everybody for sticking with me and uh, uh, coming to the show. I invite your friends and stop by. I'm on Facebook, Philip Jones. I'm on YouTube, Country Man. And Rich the Ridge Hunter's got his uh, uh, around the cabin there. And he's also got the rich to ridge hunter on, on uh youtube so yep. come by check us out yeah all right we'll catch up with you later we've got uh tomorrow night we're gonna have a special it's uh supposed to be supposed to have a show by fog 360 and fog has called in because he's got <laughs> scheduling complications with the movie stuff he's doing and so top wolf is actually making a show for him so Top Wolf is doing a show, and it's 50-some-odd minutes long. He's got a video of that. So tomorrow, we're going to have a special by Top Wolf in here. So that'll be something interesting. Is that at 8 o'clock or 9? Uh, that is at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. And the new schedule is up for this coming month because I worked on that today. So if you go to the event calendar, you can see next month all the shows are scheduled listed on there. Be sure to check out our blogs, of course, and check out the trading post. Castle Mom is working very hard getting categories up for the trading post. That'll be coming up very soon. So you guys can buy, sell, trade, uh, tell a buddy, bring a fan, do all that other good stuff like that there. And we will have the country store is up and running. So if you're interested in shopping at the country store, please go check that out. And if you don't see what you're interested in, leave a message in the comments for us uh, under contact us and let us know and we will put a category in and put the stuff in there for you so we appreciate it and uh, that's about it so I hope you all have a wonderful night and uh, if you want to stay and talk feel free we'll catch up with you all later all right God bless